Okay, I'm going to cut out this brass object. Now, some people might use the uh, magic wand tool to select it, but I find you don't have a lot of control with that. So, the tool I always use is the path tool, which you do only have in Photoshop. Now, to start with, I'll go to Window Paths and make sure you've got the paths in there. And then by clicking at the bottom here, you get a new path. I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I've got the thumbnail as big as possible. I'm just going to zoom in on the object. So, like, uh, you can zoom in and out like that. Just make sure the scrubby zoom isn't on. And then press P or click on the path. Now, what I do is I click on the edge of the object and then with the mouse, left mouse button held down, I pull the arrows out and then I let go. And then I do it again, pull the arrows out, let it go. And this helps you do a very curved path. It's very, it's quite difficult at first, but once you get your head around it, it becomes natural. And it's great now to move the picture around it doesn't matter what tool you have if you ever you press the space bar it turns it into the hand tool and then if you left click your mouse you can then move the picture let go of the space bar it's back to the pen tool so that's how I do that so I uh, say it's like mouse click pull click pull space bar click and pull click and pull it's a bit hard to see the edge. If you want more accuracy, press Control and Plus, and you'll zoom in closer. Depends on really how many you've got to do and how accurate you want it to be. So, you're basically tracing around the edge, but you'll see on the right in the uh, path palette path being duplicated in the thumbnail right when you meet the other end of the path when you meet, go over it you see that little circle that comes up make sure that comes up click on it and now it's joined now I'm going to press control zero and that fills that makes the image fill the page next thing I'm going to do is click on the path at the bottom here you've got this low path as a selection. Click on that and you'll see the little marching ants around the object. Click on your layers palette if you don't already have that up at the window layers. Click on the background. Now you could go layer new uh, by a copy or control and J. And you can see if I switch off the background that, that is now there as just the object. I'm just going to click on the background, click new layer there, and then uh, I'm going to press D, and this makes black your foreground colour and white your uh, background colour. If I press X, it swaps them around. Go to my paint bucket, it's in the same place as the gradient tool, to make sure it's on paint bucket. Click on your background layer, fill that full of white. Now I'm going to click on the object, I'll just call it the layer object, so I don't know which layer is lit. Uh, clicking on that, I'm going to right click on the thumbnail, go select pixels. And then if I click on here, where it says add layer mask, click on that, that makes that a mask. Make sure that you're on the mask, you see that when you have clicked on the thumbnail, that's highlighted around there. And here I'm going, I'm going to zoom in actually to show you what I'm doing. Clicking on the mask, go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to just do that at two pixels. And that will just blur the edge slightly. What should have done? I might just do Gaussian blur again. See that did that slightly. If I was to do that on the actual image, it would blur the whole image. But doing it on the mask means it blurs the edge. If I'm happy with that, I right click and then apply layer mask. And now I've just got a slightly blurred edge. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to press Control and Zero to fill that fit to screen. Back on the object, I'm going to right click 
select pixels. I'm going to click on the layer behind, click add a new layer, and then I'm going to press X, and this makes black my foreground colour. Paint bucket tool and fill that with black. And then I'm going to select, deselect. So if I click off the very top layer, you can see that that's my shadow behind it, which is a bit weak at the moment. I click on the move, or well, that's also a V. I'm just going to move that there. These shadows aren't quite that strong. So I'm going to go to select, no, sorry, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, but I'm going to do it more than two pixels. I'll do it about 50. Click OK. Still a very strong shadow, so clicking on the shadow, I'm going to click the opacity back to about 45. This is all personal preference, it's up to you. Now you might think that that shadow is a bit uniform in shape. So making sure that you've still got the shadow highlighted. Go to Edit, Trans Free Transform, or you can press Control and T. Now just, if, if you grab any of the corners now, it will all move it together. But if you right click on the Transform, go to Distort, I can now move each corner separately. It's going to give it a little bit of perspective there. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to click enter. And there you have it. Uh, I might think that it's a bit too uh, uniform in shape. Another thing I might do is go to the brush tool. Make sure that it's the hardness is completely off. The opacity, I knock it down to about 35. And here's my brush. Now, with all brushes, if you use the square brackets, which are the two keys to the right of the letter P, it can make your brush go bigger and smaller. So I've made it a bit bigger. And um, of course, I've got to give myself a layer mask, make sure that my brush is on back. So I'm going to do it on the layer mask, just brush slightly. This means that if I think I've overdone something like if I did that, I can swap around and bring it back in. You can see the equivalent of what I'm doing. On the thumbnail here. So just brush it and make it a bit more subtle. When I'm happy with that I'll go apply layer mask. So we want it to be transparent so I'll remove this white background, I'll move the original and the checkers show you where the transparency is. So now I'll go to layer merge visible. That's just about done, but this is a very large image and obviously you need it smaller on the internet for loading time. So I'm going to go to image, image size and make the width about 800 pixels. You can see the, if you go to view actual pixels, see that's the size it is, but uploading it, it will compress it to the size needed. Actually, I will need to find out the exact size you need for your banner, so I will find that out for you. Now I'll go to File, Save As, and it has to be a PNG file because PNG files allow you to have transparency. So go to, there you go, PNG, click Save, click OK, and there you go, that should be there for you. So I'm just going to close that. No. Uh, another thing I mentioned is uh, the coloured background. I'm just going to open this one. I made a path on that earlier. So if I click on the path, click on the make it into selection back on the layers panel, control and J, new layer. So T X paint bucket, fill it full of white. You can see now what I mean about you can see the background through the glass. So I'm going to click on the bottle. One thing that um you could do is use the sponge tool that's in the same palette as the dodge and burn if you have a sponge on desaturate you can start desaturated areas a bit or alternatively you can drag that top layer and copy it go to image adjustments hue saturation and desaturate see that's a bit too much and that's all of it so clicking on the layer mask make sure you've got the mask selected Black is your foreground colour, paint bucket, I'm going to fill that with black. I'm going to zoom in, 
making sure I've got my mask highlighted, go to your paintbrush tool, make sure white is your foreground colour, and I'm going to brush over. I'm going to do that at 100%. And I'm just going to do this on the area of glass. If you accidentally go over, the beauty of uh, layer masks is if you swap black to your foreground colour, you can now brush over, rectify your mistakes. You can see the equivalent to what you're doing here in the thumbnail. I'm just going to press X again to make white my foreground colour. So brush a bit bigger. Using the space bar to get the hand tool up. There you go. Press Control and Zero for it to fill the space. Now you might think that that's just a bit too grey scale and a bit overdone. If I click back on the thumbnail and to the opacity, knock that back. Just fades it a bit so it's not bright brown. I've left the liquid brown because it might have been a brown perfume. Now I'm just going to remove the white layer. Oh no, I'm not going to leave that. Thought I've forgotten about the shadow. I'm just going to click on this layer, press the shift key on the next layer, go layer, uh, I think it's just merge. So that, that's put those two together. So here I'm going to right click, select pixels, click on the layer behind it, the new layer, X to bring back black to the foreground, paint bucket, and fill that. Select, deselect. So as you can see, I've got my shadow there again. So clicking on the shadow layer, just name it shadow. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, yep, 50 pixels, that's good. And then I'm going to move it down a bit. So I press V down here a bit. Say so that's a bit strong, so let's make it. 45. I've just typed that in. You can obviously scroll that up and down as well. And I'm clicking on the shadow layer, Control T. That free transforms it. Right click, distort. So I'm just going to move that. I think this shows it a bit better than the other one. So there you go, slightly better shadow. When you're happy with that, press enter. Give that a new layer mask. Make sure black is your foreground colour. Press B to get your paintbrush. Make that a bit 32%. Make that bigger. I'm just going to brush the edge of that. And when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click on the top the layers that I require. Hold Shift, Layer, Merge Layers. Let's just delete the other ones. It's a bit big, so image, image size, make that 800, file, save as, say PNG, save, okay, and close it.